Okay, if anybody's out there yet, I decided to go ahead and go live a little bit early because uh, we've got a little bit of wind blowing and there's, you know, the sky is thinking about raining. So the internet is iffy at best, at least on this little computer. So I'm going to wait a few minutes and one o'clock will really go live if this thing lasts if it doesn't if it doesn't give up on us Anyway, if anyone's out there already, I hope you're having a good Easter. Mona emailed me earlier and told me today is Easter, so I thought I ought to tell you happy Easter. Hope you found all your eggs, all that kind of stuff. I hope the kids found all the eggs. I think I'm just talking to myself here, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Just wait around a little bit and you guys will start showing up. Oh, I'll be right back. If anyone's there, I'll be right back.
Come on, go work. All right, we ought to be live. Anybody out there yet? I'm showing about a half a minute till one. All right, we're going live. I probably won't have anybody drop in today because it's Easter. So happy Easter to everybody. Um, I've been thinking seriously lately about joining Al Qaeda because, uh, you know, nothing to do with the way things are in the country or anything like that. But I've been seriously considering joining Al Qaeda because I've noticed those guys can make a damn phone call from the deepest, darkest cave in Afghanistan or inside some far underground bunker. They can make phone calls from all of that and order all kinds of hate and discontent. And here in the States, at least here in Southeast Arizona, if a gnat passes gas in Montana, it's hard for me to even get online. We've got a lot of wind outside right now. So if you hear it whistling, that's what that is, is the wind. The Hubble is not airtight. And uh, so if you hear anything like that, that's all that is. I wanted to talk a little bit about PayHip today. I just finished uploading over yesterday and today. I uploaded a uh, hundred what they call products, and those products are all ebooks. And I uploaded three files for every one of those ebooks. I uploaded a PDF, an EPUB, and a Mobi. And it was really simple to do. It takes about two minutes to upload a file. And completely, I put the book up online. I mean, the upload of the file takes like a couple of seconds. So you can put a new book or product online in a matter of two or three minutes max. And sometimes it only took me three minutes, even though I had to create a PDF before I could upload it. So it's really a simple thing to do. And uh, man, I don't know if it was around when I first started uh, 10 years ago writing novels. But if it was, I wish I'd known about it. And if you uh, don't have a lot of IP right now, Right now is the time you need to sign up for PayHip or something like it. You need to get things set up now so you don't have to do what I've been doing the last two days and spend, you know, every waking moment uh, uploading files and rearranging things. Oh, and I found out just today in PayHip, they have a thing called collections. And they're not talking about like you and I think of short story collections and things like that. When they say collections, they're talking about collections of books. So they're talking about genre, what we call genre or what we call series of books. So I just found that. And uh, <clears throat> it's a little bit clunky because you can't add a book to a collection as you're uploading the book. but 
when you go in and click the collections page and then, uh, you know, name your new collection, like I named one a while ago, West Crowley, the, and then all the books that I've added pop up down below that with check boxes beside them. So then I just had to go through and check, you know, 22 books, put a little check mark beside it, and then click add to series and they were or add to collection and they were all added to the collection. They also let you upload a, a little uh, logo like, I don't know, for the West Crowley saga, I uploaded uh, a cover I did for the saga a long time ago. Real pretty picture. It has horses on it and all that stuff. So I uploaded that for the Blackwell Ops collection series. I uploaded, I, I created a new square logo. It's 1,000 by 1,000 pixels square and uploaded that. And I put the, the Blackwell Ops kind of saying on it, you know, real real-time solutions for real-world problems. That's what Mr. Blackwell does, what he offers. So I put that on there, kind of a catchphrase. Might, might garner some interest, might not. And uh, just I've just done a lot of other stuff with, with PayHip over the last couple of days. And it's free. It costs you nothing. You know, I'm still on the free plan, free plan right now. And I have a hundred different books up there. So in fact, I have 102 because uh, when I had a hundred, the last group of things I uploaded, the last group of books I uploaded were all mysteries. And it struck me that I had 14 of them and they were split right down the middle. Seven of them were Stone, uh, Stern Talbot PI mysteries. And seven of them were just one-off mystery novels I had written. So I divided those into the two groups. And I created, I designed a cover and a promo doc. And I compiled all the Stone Talbot stories into one document. All the novels, there were five novels and two novellas. And I put all those into one document. 210,000 words, and then I slapped cover on it, and I published it to draft to digital, and uh, <clears throat> and as soon as I got the EPUB file from that, I uploaded that EPUB file to Amazon, because Amazon's always yelling at me because I don't take time to create a an interactive uh, table of contents on my Word document that I was uploading to them. They don't like that. But draft to digital automatically creates a table of contents. So I just uploaded the EPUB from them to Amazon and Amazon took it. Already has table of contents in it. No problem at all. So that all worked out real well. Then I took both those collections. I had one for Stone, uh, Stone uh, Stern Talbot. I don't know why it's so hard for me to say. I'm, I made him up. I made one for Stern Talbot, and I made the other one for uh, the one-off uh, mystery stories. I made up a, a separate uh, omnibus collection for those. So there are seven books in each one, and uh, that one was 250-some thousand words when it was finished. It has six novels and one novella in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I got all that done. And so that's two more products up there. Uh, six more e-files. Also, I found out today when you click on uh, a buy link for it, it'll, it'll take you straight to PayHip, to my page on PayHip, to the book page on PayHip. And then you can either put it in your shopping cart and keep looking for more stuff, or you can click buy now. And either one you do, when you click on that, and when you pay your, you know, whatever money it is, 
four dollars or five dollars or twenty dollars for those two collections you download paypal and i mean uh, i'm sorry you download pdf and moby and epub so you get all three files when you buy one of them from them so that's pretty cool too instead of having to go through and pick which one you want you just they just send you all three of them okay i've got some folks coming in there's mona hi baby uh bob beckley hey bob uh peter hey good to have you back happy easter to you too bob hey buck good to hear, good to see you again man I swear I'm on an, I think, I think one of the characters in a, an upcoming Blackwell Ops novel is going to be Buck somebody. I like that name. That's a good name. Uh, Roy. Hey, Roy, my boy, my son is here. Uh, happy Easter, Roy. Happy, happy Easter, Kathy. Yeah, see, now they're all taking care of themselves over there. They're, they're talking back and forth to each other. So that's good. I've got me a, almost a little studio set up here. I won't try to explain it, but I have a big styrofoam thing setting in this window. There's a window right in front of me here. That's where all the light's coming from. And I have a styrofoam thing sitting there. And I got the bright idea that I would get out my little pocket knife and carve a hole in that styrofoam to insert my camera in it to bring the camera up higher. So that's why I'm not, you know, when I'm looking at the camera, at least I'm not looking down so much. So that makes it a little bit better. I think, I don't know. That's up to you guys to decide. So that's all about pay hip. And I'll talk a lot more about pay hip in the journal tomorrow. For those of you who want to know, uh, but man, seriously, it's a really great thing. It's a really easy thing, really intuitive, and uh, really, so it's really easy to use, and it's free. So if you only have a little bit of IP right now, get it set up now. It's going to be sheer heaven for me going forward once I get all the, the stuff I have added to it. But that's going to take me at least a few more days to get all that stuff added. And I'm not going to do it right now. I got all my novels up, so that's enough. But uh, and novellas. But going forward, I'm going to have to add all my collections. There are about 30 of those. I'm going to have to add all my nonfiction books. There, are, I don't know, 12 or 15 of those. And so, in the future, when I write one, I'll just automatically spend about, I don't know, three minutes, four minutes, adding it to pay hip. And it'll be done. Uh, and see, if you go in right now and set up all your your inventory, uh, you can do the same thing without one day having to set aside, you know, three or four days like I just did to go through and do them all at once. It's just, it just a ton smarter and better way to do it. Okay, what else do we want to talk about? Okay, everybody's down here. What's my pay hip, Addy? Uh, thanks, Peter, for asking. If you, I don't have everything set up right now, but I think it's payhip.com forward slash stone thread publishing. I think all one word, stone thread publishing. And uh, but if you, I, I have put two links on the on the website so far. If you go to stonethreadpublishing.com and go to the mysteries page, <clears throat> if you go to the mysteries tab, you'll see us the those two uh, omnibus collections I put up, and I've got both those linked directly to PayHip already. So you can go in and take a look at those just to give you an idea, you know, of, of what they do. And I haven't really set up my page on PayHip very well yet. So, you know, it's like you're coming to my house and I'm just going to tell you it's dirty right now. I haven't cleaned it in a while. So you're going to have to have to check back on that later. 
Oh, Peter, thanks. He said, yep, that's it. So apparently he went unchecked. Um, yeah, I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't sure. And my, my memory isn't working all that well right now because I've been running really hard getting all this stuff set up. I still haven't added all the links to Stone Thread either. And actually, I'm thinking about this is brand new. I don't even think it's in the journal for tomorrow yet. Uh, I'm thinking about and I'm thinking about getting rid of all the individual book pages on stonethreadpublishing.com, which will make that website a whole lot lighter. And instead, I'm thinking about just linking the covers that are on the genre pages instead of linking them to individual book pages on stone thread, why not just link them straight to the pay hip book page? So that way you can, you know, the, the browser can go and uh, they can click the cover and they'll go read about the book because the whole description is on the book page and the covers on the book page. And then the buy link is right there if they decide they want to get it. So I'm thinking really seriously about doing that. I don't, I don't see a downside to doing that yet. So I'm kind of waiting, but I've read their terms of service and uh, you know, you own what you own and, and they own their proprietary stuff. And that's all, that's all there is to it. And that's as it should be. What I'll probably do on stone thread if I go that route, if I just link all my genre, the small pictures on my genre page, pages, excuse me, to the pay hip account, what I'll probably do is keep all those other stone thread pages somewhere, those individual book pages. I'll probably keep them somewhere so I can bring them back if I need to, because I don't really trust putting my, my stuff on someone else's platform. Um, not that they'll steal it. I'm absolutely certain they won't. Like I said, I've read the terms of service, but what happens if something happens? Uh, what happens if, uh, you know, the company goes under or something one day, even Amazon's going to go under something sooner or later. So I don't really like having all my eggs in that one basket. So if I, if I have to, uh, if I do that, I'll probably keep my stone thread publishing pages somewhere also. Okay. Getting all serious here. Did you guys hear me talking earlier about thinking of, I'm thinking about joining Al, Al Qaeda? I am. I'm seriously considering. I've already got the beard started, you know, and it, <clears throat> it seems to me Al Qaeda can make a phone call from a cave in Afghanistan or deep in a bunker or wherever. And they have no problem making phone calls and causing all kinds of hate and discontent. And, you know, today we have a little bit of wind outside and it's threatening rain, you know, so there are some damp clouds around and I'm having a hard time getting on the Internet. So this this setup we have right now uh, was really iffy. I got on here about 1230. And the little thing just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While it was warming up, I guess, uh, had to let the tubes get warm or something. So it could, so I could go live. So that had me worried. But, you know, we're in the States. We're not in Afghanistan, the cave. So, you know, if, if a gnat passes gas in Montana and I'm down here in Southeast Arizona, I find it hard to get online. Okay, uh, more stuff coming in. Tubes, there's a word I haven't heard for a while. <laughs> yep. Did your dad ever bang on the TV to try to get the tubes to warm up faster? <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't bang on the TV. I'd come away with a broken arm, but. Some people were allowed to do that. Um, 
You noticed I uploaded PDF files. Yes, I uploaded PDF files because some people want them. I've seen times when, uh, especially with nonfiction books, sometimes people want to download those and print them out. And that's why I do it. Uh, I'll tell you what, Peter, my theory is this. My take on it is this. If I upload just Moby, then I shut out a bunch of people who read with PDF and EPUB. And, you know, today, really, EPUB is the big thing, and I understand that. But there are still some folks out there who would rather read on PDF. So I uploaded all three kinds. And I'm not worried about my work being stolen or any of that. With any luck at all, uh, you know, if anybody steals it, pirates it, whatever. I don't, give, I don't give them the benefit of calling them pirates. Pirates are kind of cool. But if they pirate it or whatever, then, you know, I don't care. They're not costing me much. And if they read it and like it, maybe they'll actually go buy something later. I don't know. Um, haven't looked at them all, but are all priced five bucks? No, I think Peter's asking, are all my books priced five dollars? No, uh, the two that I just uploaded, the two, the two big uh, omnibus collections of seven novels each. One, uh, both those are priced at $20 if you buy them through PayHip. If you get them through Amazon or draft to digital you know, books to read, they're going to cost you $25. So I try to give discounts through PayHip. Uh, if I have a novel that is priced uh, $5.99 out in the real world at Amazon or, or books to read or, you know, Kobo, Barnes & Noble and all that stuff, then I price it at $5 on PayHip at Stone's Red Publishing and on PayHip. And if it's $4.99, I knock a dollar off that and price it at $4. So that's that's my pricing strategy, if you can call it that. Um, okay, I think I'm caught up with all the comments down here. Forgive me for looking down, but my computer is about a foot. Well, my screen is about a foot below the camera. So I have to look down there now and then to see what's going on. And Peter, if you get looking real close at that pay hip, you'll probably find some, like I think almost all the mysteries are priced $4, but you'll probably find two or three that are priced at five because that's the default at pay hip so i might have missed a few of them but if i did i'll go back and change them later because i want to give folks a discount for buying direct from me yeah but i'm thinking i said before i'm thinking more and more about just linking the individual little 180 by 270 um book covers on the genre pages. I'm thinking about just linking those directly to pay hip. Oh, that's the other thing too. As soon as you upload a book, pay hip gives you right then, they give you the URL for that book page. And you can put that URL anywhere. You can, you know, you can put it on Facebook if you want to, or Twitter or wherever. Um, I'll be putting all of them on my site later on once I decide whether I'm going to put them on the individual book pages, probably not, or put them on the genre pages, which is what I'll probably do. Because I've got a book page on PayHip anyway, so why not just send them straight there? The easier you make it on the reader, the more chance they are going to buy your book. That's just, you know, I used to tell kids all the time, they'd be filling out an application when I was teaching school. They'd be filling out a job application and it would be all sloppy. I'd go, you know, you ought to, you ought to make that phone number so they can read it, read it a little bit better. Oh, they'll figure it out. I said, no, you don't understand. It's more important to you 
that you get that job than it is for them to give it to you. So you got to make it easy on the people you're applying to. Okay. And the same thing happens here. We are asking readers to buy our product. So we need to make it as easy on them as we can to do that. That's the same reason I keep telling you guys, be sure at the, at the bottom of your email, be sure you put in a footer or something in there, a signature, they call it, <clears throat> that, says, that has your email address, your website URL, you know, things like that. Make it easy for people to find you. And while we're on the topic of that, if you're like a couple of my kids, you know, and you come up with all these cutesy email names, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. If you're writing under your own name and you're selling books under your own name, set up your email account under your own name. Make it easier for people to find you. You know, okay, that's about enough finger wagging for a while. Um, do they have a base, a base cover size? No, not that I saw. Their only guidance regarding cover size, what it should be, I think they said it should be at least a thousand pixels wide. And all my covers are 2,000, so I don't worry about it. Um, on the collection covers that I uploaded, those were only 1,000 because I'm not, I haven't looked at the collections yet, so I'm not sure how big they look on the page. But the covers look huge on the page. And I think I can change that later when I go back in and work on setting up the site better. I'm not sure, but I think I can. Hey, Patrick, how are you? I didn't expect you today, my friend. I figured you'd be out there wrangling folks to hunt Easter eggs or something or, you know, services and all that. Payhip started in 2011 in London. Thank you, Bob. I started in 2014 in Southeast Arizona and I didn't know about them. But anyway, I know about them now. So, all that griping about, I wish I'd known about them back then. That was me talking on your behalf. You know about them now. So, so uh, you know, you don't have to figure it out as you go. I'll tell you a lot of it. Uh, and that just, you know, that's what we ought to all be doing. We ought to all be trying to help each other out a little bit. So if, if there's something I know, I'll pass it along. That's what I've been trying to do with all this pay hip stuff over the last couple of days. Uh, did I get that cap in? I can't read that, Buck. D-N-A-L-E-C-W-E-N. -E nope. I don't remember where I got this cap. Probably at the thrift store on base. And the reason I like it, it says New Zealand right across there, but that's not it. I like it because of the white feather. And it's probably supposed to be a leaf, but to me it looked like a white feather. And that's one of my uh, one of my all-time heroes is a, was a Marine named Gunnery Sergeant Carlos Hathcock. Some of you, I hope, have heard of him. Uh, he made the longest recorded sniper kill in Vietnam. Um, the guy ended up dying as a result of injuries he sustained when he kept running into an Amtrak to get folks out of it while it was on fire. But, uh, he spent a lot of time in the bush. Uh, anyway, the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese army called him white feather. And because he always wore one in his, in his boonie hat and, uh, they put a pretty severe bounty on his head that they never collected. Oh, it's written backward. New Zealand. Nope. Didn't get it in New Zealand. Sorry, Buck. Why are you screwing with me, Buck? You don't don't write stuff backward. I'm tired. And I'm old, so you know, you gotta take pity. I'm like 26 already. 
I look like this because I was road hard and put away wet, but I am only 26. Uh, Kathy Garcia has got three smiley faces up there. Kathy Garcia is like my daughter. She's a sweetheart, a sweetheart and a half. She said, Roy's laughing out loud, probably because I said I'm 26. He doesn't know. He has no idea how old I am. All my kids think I'm like 90 or something. I'm not. I'm not. Not sure what's going on with my hair over here. See that? I got to get a haircut sometime. I would take my cap off, but right over here on this side, my hair goes poof. It just shoots out here all by itself. All the rest of it's being behaved, but that one little bunch just kind of. So I got to keep my hat on. Oh, uh, let's see. What else? What else? Oh, I got this really neat old brass. Can you see it? Heavy brass ashtray. See that big bullet in it? That's not a 50 caliber round. I thought it was, but it's actually a little smaller than a 50 cal. And this thing came from Great Britain. The big shell on the bottom, if you can, you can probably tell that's part of a shell casing. That big shell is a three inch Mark II M2. That's the first thing it told me it wasn't from America because of um, M2 in America, Modus is a 50 caliber machine gun. And then it's got a smaller shell in the middle or a smaller uh, bullet in the middle, and I'm not sure what it is. But it's, uh, it's a millimeter. It's probably, I think I measured it. I think it's 13 millimeters or something like that. Some odd size, 13 or 17 or something like that. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. And these, these, uh, Things right here where you would put your cigar or whatever. Uh, these are old British coins that are curved and put in there. So I thought that was pretty neat. Um, one of my other sons, Jimmy, brought that to me because he didn't need it. I don't use it, but I like it. So thought I'd show you that. Okay, I guess we better wrap up. Uh, let's see. No, <laughs> Patrick asked, have I ever written a story inspired by my extreme cold weather experience? No, I don't want to relive it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anybody that doesn't know the story, I, when I was still in the core, I was already at my probably mid thirties, maybe a little older than that. <clears throat> my, my, uh, battery, my, firing a Hawk missile system firing battery. So most of the guys under me are all techs, right? T E C H S techs, technicians. And, uh, so somebody got the bright idea to take us up there for cold weather training. And up there is pickle meadows, California, which is right in the mountains on the Nevada, California border. And it just happens to be on the same parallel, the same latitude as Chosen Reservoir over in Korea. That's why the Marine Corps picked it, I'm sure, for the Mar Marine Corps cold weather training site. So we went up there. They had these 10 and 12 foot tall Quantitats completely covered with snow. Uh, they were in the valley and they were completely level off covered with snow. To get from one to the other, they would go through tunnels that they dug in the snow. So that was the environment. And we did some, uh, we did a lot of cross country skiing, which was kind of fun, but exhausting. If you've ever done it, you know what I mean. Um, and then one night we all, we, we slept outside in snow caves, but all my guys, you know, were paired up in two man snow caves and I was the gunny. <laughs> so I was blessed. I got to sleep by myself in a one man snow cave. And, uh, 
it got cold. It got a little chilly. It was 57 below zero uh, on, the, on the coldest morning. And that was without any wind. That was just, just cold. At one point, I'll tell another little story about that. At one point, uh, I think it was our next last day there or something like that. The Sergeant Major had an, inspe- had an instructor come in and they were going to take us downhill skiing on this road. But the problem was there was no snow on the road. It was all ice. And if you've ever skied on ice, you know that's not any fun. I was talking with my buddy Russ uh, here a little while back, and he said he skied on ice before. So he knew what I was talking about. You can't put enough rosin on your skis to keep you upright when you're on ice. So the instructor was nice, though. You know, he was telling us how to adjust the settings on our ski boots and all that stuff so that we wouldn't break an ankle if, if, you know, we fell over. The ski would go flying off on its own and all that. And the sergeant major was real nice. And he said, yes, that's good. That's good. And when the instructor left, the sergeant major turned around and said, you will tighten yours all the way down. And he said, and if you fall and break something, I'll write a letter home. Dear mom, Johnny broke his ankle. Oh, dear, how sad. Never freaking mind. (laughs) So, which I'm laughing, but he was only joking, sort of. Uh, He's really not that bad a guy. I knew him pretty well. But he was doing the tough thing, you know, trying to motivate the kids. And we did ski down the the, uh, road. And the only loss we had was someone's blanket roll went flying off their back and tumbled down the side. And that was his fault because he didn't have it secured tight enough. But it went into a canyon. And for my money, it's probably still there. (coughs) Blankets are a lot cheaper to replace than people. So. But, yeah, I was never so happy to get back to Yuma, Arizona. And we went up there from Yuma, Arizona, from 100-degree weather to 57 below <laughs> one day. So that was that was not good. I've told my wife many times before, I've never been cold since. I get chilly, but I've never been cold since then. So that's kind of a blessing. Hope everybody found some Easter eggs today. I hope you hid some for your babies. I hope you enjoyed your babies thoroughly. I hope they did something just stupid enough to make you laugh. You know, those are some of the best times. Uh, Not sure what else to say. It's a good day. It's a good day. Uh, I reminded a friend earlier today. I said, you know, he was a former Marine, too, former jarhead like me. And I said, you know what Sergeant Major always said? Every day's a holiday, every meal's a banquet, and you will enjoy it. So we'll talk to you later. Thanks for coming by.